1987, Professor Peter Swetman, who was the chief scientist at the Australia Road Research Board, which has now morphed into the National Transport Research Organisation, Peter Swetman put together the original calculations on behalf of governments questioning around whether we could allow high combination B-doubles to operate on the roads in Australia. B-doubles would be more efficient, they would be more productive, they would reduce trucks on the roads, uh, but the challenge was, was the technology of the connections between the truck and the trailers, was it up to the task to allow for those masses to be run in those combinations? So Swetman set about the original trial in 1987. And what we've done with our project is we've taken Swetman's work and we've now taken it to another level of high mass combination vehicles. For this project it was important to do all of our testing on a 160 tonne combination. Um, previous testing had tested to 125 tonne and we needed to extend that to uh, the common combination that's out there. The combination that we managed to uh, utilise uh, was owned by Direct Hall. They were doing a routine trip from Darwin around the Northern Territory, around about 500 k's daily. They were an immense assistance on this project. Within the quad road train, you've of course got the four trailers. In between each of those four trailers is the dolly. And we were able to, uh, with the help of Smedley's Engineering, who were the prime contractor in, on this project, put together a dolly which had sensors on it, which were situated in between the structure of the dolly and the coupling. So both the forward coupling and the fifth wheel coupling sitting underneath the trailers. Now those sensors were able to pick up uh, the forces uh, and we also had accelerometers and other sensors there as well for each of those locations. We did the testing over three separate days. On, on each of those days we reconfigured the road train to have uh, our coupling full of its sensors and recording equipment on the forward, mid and rear locations within the road train. The good news was that the results were validated the Australian standards. So in the Australian standards are the formulae that were first proposed almost 40 years ago and there, were, there wasn't a great deal of certainty about what was going on beyond that 125 tonne window at which they were validated back in the day. So this provides an evidence base for validation to 160 tonne. What that means is that we can with confidence continue to specify the couplings that are already out there, uh, commonly available uh, couplings, a known technology, uh, across the, our 160 tonne fleet, which is becoming more and more common on Australian roads. We also found out um, a lot about where these forces were coming in and how best to manage those forces into the future. So a significant finding was that the, the force that the uh, couplings are subject to in the forward dolly and the rearward dolly is similar to the forces experienced by the central dolly. It was anticipated that the highest forces would be observed in the, in the central dolly because you've got the most mass either side of the dolly. So those masses sort of fight each other and the, the coupling has to handle that in between. But we're seeing high forces in the forward dolly and the rearward dolly due to dynamic effects such as the shunting in the combination, uh, a bit of a whiplash effect. Uh, and as a result, we can recommend as part of uh, this research that all of the couplings are selected on the basis of a worst case calculation uh, in terms of the coupling strength. So basically on the, on the central dolly. Now it follows from the formulae that are already out there in the standards. Those formulae reduce to an approximation whereby the selection of the GCM or the, or the gross combination mass of the road train can be on the basis of the published D value for coupling times two thirds, so two thirds of that number can be your maximum GCM. It's as simple as that for all of your couplings, automatic pin or fifth wheel, no matter where they appear in the road train. Uh, so it simplifies that, that's more or less the status quo anyway, um, but it formalises that status quo and, uh, and it means that we have appropriate redundancy for all of those couplings in the road train. The most important one I think in the short term is the, that we recommend the use of electronic brake timing for road trains. Uh, and that means that the brake signal applies to all of the brakes along the road train all at the same time. And that takes away a lot of those shunting forces that occur in between the road train trailers. And in the road trains that we tested, there was uh, air brake timing, wherein an air signal has to make its way down the road train. And as a result, and you can see in the coupling forces, 
um, peak forces in the couplings as the trailers effectively run into each other before the brakes are applied um, along the road train. And so electronic brake timing uh, makes a lot of sense to solve that problem. Another related uh, innovation that, that could be required is to reduce the maximum tolerance that's allowed in the couplings themselves. And so that tolerance at the moment, we can actually see that the uh, impact as the trailers move relative to one another within that tolerance of the actual uh, connection in the coupling itself. And if that comes down a whisker, it would add some design redundancy um, and reduce those peak forces as they shoot up as that gap grows larger, particularly as the coupling gets towards its wear limit. Trucks and certainly road trains operate under a social licence where it's important that the community has confidence in those combinations being safe. There's also a need to be as environmentally responsible as we can be as we move our product around. So the bigger the road train, the more tonnage it can take, uh, the less impact. Uh, there's also less costs. And so this research uh, program, uh, we think contributes to a body of work that, that validates uh, and encourages the uptake of increasingly heavier combinations but in a way that meets community expectations in terms of safety. Anything that we can do in the advancement of safety initiatives in transport is absolutely critical. Transport underpins almost every other industry in our economy and it's one of the few industries that comes into contact with the general public on roads in close proximity on a daily basis. Look, I think the key finding for industry is that we have now got a validated formula for recommending couplings over 125 tonne. So that's really going to help now the, the fleet managers in specifying the couplings on their vehicles for those applications. It's going to help the workshop technicians to understand how to maintain and how to, and how to work with, those, with that uh, coupling technology. And it's also going to help the regulators now to understand that if you are running in, in vehicles above 125 tonne, then you have to go back and revisit your coupling recommendations based on, on our report and our conclusions. On the ARTSA website, there's a full library of project work uh, that we've been involved in for many, many years, including this state-of-the-art project now, and the information is all free and it's on the ARTSA website.